Welcome to Small Cap Nation. I'm Jane King at the NASDAQ market site in Times Square. Uh, with me today, two key executives from Immune Pharmaceuticals and with uh, Dr. Daniel Tepper, the CEO of the company, and also Monica Lukey, who is the Chief Medical Officer. And uh, we're going to break some news here today. So, Dr. Tepper, if you could tell me what the latest is with the company. Sure. Uh, good morning. So, we announced this morning uh, important news for our cancer drug, uh, Cyplin. So Cyplin is a cancer immunotherapy which had previously been shown uh, to uh, improve progression-free uh, survival in a phase three clinical trial in combination with another drug called interleukin-2. Uh, so that was important in its time. But the news today is uh, we have identified uh, several predictive uh, biomarkers. And in addition to that, has also shown that you know, Cyplin has potential for further development in combination with another uh, cancer immunotherapy called immune checkpoint inhibitors. Now, cancer immunotherapy, um, according to Andrew Baum, uh, a, a, a biotech analyst at, uh, at Citi, mm -hmm. um, may be the beginning of the end of, uh, of cancer. So the growth of the market for cancer immunotherapy is expected to happen thanks to blockbuster drugs such as Keytruda from Merck, uh, Obdiva and Ervoid from Bristol Myers Squibb, but also the development of combination uh, treatments as well as new types of antibodies called bispecific antibodies. Okay, well there's a, a lot of science there. So what does that mean in terms of myself or my family or somebody who um, I'm scared of cancer or has had cancer? Um, how did, would all this work? When might we actually see the impact of this? Uh, you see the impact you know, today with the new cancer immunotherapy uh, drugs that I just mentioned. Uh, it's additional hope for patients of uh, not only improvement in symptoms and significantly longer uh, survival. Uh, cancer immunotherapy actually uses uh, your own immune system uh, to fight the cancer. It's expected to not only be effective or improve the effectiveness of existing treatments, but also to be much safer. Okay, so you don't have the, some of the side effects that you have with the, like chemotherapy and some of the treatments for cancer now. You should have you know, less yeah. side effects. Okay, all right. Uh, Dr. Lukey, uh, tell me about what you're working with. Okay, I'm gonna slow down here. Bertalimumab. I gotta slow it down to say it. So That's tell right. me about that well drug. Done. What is it? What are the latest developments with that? So bertalimumab is our uh, monoclonal antibody targeting eotaxin 1. Uh, eotaxin 1 is a key uh, element in inflammatory diseases, in multiple inflammatory diseases, in including skin diseases, GI diseases, gastrointestinal diseases, lung diseases. Um, we're studying two of those particularly, two of those areas right now, but eotaxin 1 has the potential uh, to really be used much more broadly in the future, and we hope, we hope to see that. Right now, we're concentrating on two areas. One is in the dermatology field, and one is in the gastrointestinal field or inflammatory bowel disease. Um, for the dermatology field, we're looking at a very rare disease called bullous pemphigoid. It affects older adults, um, usually over the age of 60. It's a blistering disease, um, and the morbidity or the, the illness that's associated with that is actually quite significant because the current treatment right now is high dose steroids, which high dose steroids, I think most people are familiar with the fact that there are a lot of side effects with high dose steroids, including increased infection rates, um, glaucoma, high blood pressure, heart disease, etc. And um, to be able to reduce the amount of steroids used or perhaps even eliminate it would be really fantastic and so we're looking right now at uh, a study that's going on it started in israel um, in the u.s we plan to bring sites up very soon we had our ind cleared last year which uh, validates in and of itself uh, the promise of bertolimumab um, we plan to bring on at least uh, four or five academic centers we've already identified them we're actively doing the um, the regulatory work right now to be able to engage them in, in recruiting patients um, and we've already uh, got screening going on in Israel, as I mentioned, so that's very exciting. We're also looking at, we have an active study going on right now, another phase two study in ulcerative colitis, um, which is one form of inflammatory bowel disease. The other that many people know is Crohn's disease. We've focused on ulcerative colitis uh, for right now, and we have 
multiple sites open in Israel, six different sites open in Israel, and we will be branching out into um, Eastern Europe and, and other areas in the world to try to accelerate um, recruitment as much as possible so that we can get an answer as to, to whether or not um, bertolimumab has an effect there. There's strong scientific evidence to show that eotaxin um, which traffics eosinophils, which are inflammatory cells. I don't want to get too, mm -hmm. too much into these different um, minuscule aspects about science, but basically there's good scientific evidence to show that the cells that are active in the inflammation that cause the bowel inflammation and um, the tissue destruction in ulcerative colitis, eotaxin has an effect on bringing those cells into the picture. So if we can block eotaxin, then we hope that we decrease the amount of inflammatory response and improve healing in those conditions. Okay, well, fascinating and important work. I mean, I really enjoy hearing about all these developments and I hope you come back uh, when you have more news to share with us. Thank you so much, you. Dr. Lukey and also Dr. Tapper for joining us today. And thank you for joining us. I'm Jane King for Small Cap Nation.